Welcome listeners, today is part one of Michi's journey, The Lost Chapter, a collaboration of both Jace York and Carl Brandt with some flavor text from me. So, sit back, lovely people, turn the lights off, the sound up, and get ready for something unique. Michi had been traveling on his journey fulfilling his passion to support those in need, and performing charity work to keep himself busy. Of course, this was nothing related to his main role regarding exercising yokai, but more of his own personal duty to help those in need. Michi had turned 16 at this point, and had almost a quarter of his hair dashed with a slash of white brought on by his previous yokai encounters. His physique, however, has been honed to be compact and dense, spending more time on endurance training than he ever had before. He was now easily able to lift 300 or more pounds despite his size, and his fights with the yokai have left small yet memorable scars over his arms, torso, and legs. With training, his bones became denser and harder to break. With the thoughts of readying himself for the next yokai playing in his mind, one never knows when or rather what his next opponent would be. Michi had been traveling to a village that was rumored to be in drought, and was bringing with him a cart full of water to help the townsfolk. That's when he heard an ominous noise off the side of the road near the woods, something that wasn't familiar to him. Michi pulled the cart off the path so others could still traverse. The sound grew louder and a faint green glow came from deep inside the woods. Michi wondered if this was a rip in the veil between the living and the afterlife. Perhaps something only he could see, but why? What is this thing? And what yokai could just spill from it if given the chance? Questions like this swarmed his thoughts as he drew closer to the anomaly. His questions, however, were answered. A tall man wearing a black jacket A white shirt and blue pants with a blade strapped to his back was hurled out of the portal. Ah! And mid-flight, Michi noticed on his back there was a spear-like object, but the blade was just about as long as the handle. He realized it looked like a Pu Dao, similar in style to the ones he's seen used by his fellow monks. He landed with a thud on his back. Ah, damn it! The rip quickly closed. Michi looked over the new arrival and felt the same presence as a yokai. Without hesitation, Michi drew his katana and took a high stance facing the threat before him. Whoa. Hey man, I just need to get home. Do you know where or when I am? Michi listened to the creature talk in its odd language and decided that it, he, or whatever the thing was, was indeed yokai and made a quick slash down at the creature. He dodged and said, Can you understand me? Michi was stunned by the reflexes of the yokai. He decided to do a small hop forward, letting his left foot trail behind his right as he brought it up and did a sidekick, aiming right for the yokai's solar plexus, attempting to knock the wind out of it. The yokai took the force of the kick with a thud, expressing a disappointed expression at the hit as if it were nothing. Now though, it looked angry. He grabbed Michi's face and threw him back. Michi was launched off his feet with bestial strength and across the small clearing towards the tree line. He bounced once off the ground and came skidding to a halt in front of a large oak tree. (sighs) Michi grunted as he brought himself off the ground. I guess I have to take him seriously, he smirked as he slightly slumped over looking more like a monkey than a human and leapt up placing his feet firmly against the trunk of the tree kicking off and rocketing himself at the thing before him. The yokai grabbed the blade on his back and threw it at Michi like a spear. Michi couldn't maneuver out of the way of the projectile in time, which pierced him through the abdomen, and with enough force to pin him to a nearby tree. He began to panic, grabbing at the weapon and paled in his abdomen as if to remove it. He suddenly grimaced as the visage before him exploded into a spray of spider silk and appeared behind him. Michi swung his katana with all his might, trying to cleave the yokai in half. The blade sliced through the yokai, but only halfway. After a mere second had passed, black tendrils extended themselves from the severed end of the creature and reattached the other half. Michi watched in horror 
as the creature pulled itself back together as if it was never cut at all. And during this act of rejoining, the yokai itself pulled Michi's katana out of its own body, dexterously. Michi realized that this might be one yokai that death is not the answer to stopping its existence. Understanding the true danger this being possessed, he yanked one of his talismans, dropped it on the ground, and hopped back, creating some space between him and the entity. He was hoping the yokai wouldn't see it before it had time to activate, and he was in luck. So he thought. The talisman began to glow a dark red as it erupted into flames. This should be enough to incinerate the yokai and prevent it from regenerating. Michi quietly reassured himself. The yokai reacted so quickly that his movements were a blur. Michi, although experienced, was unable to keep up. Before he could truly understand what the yokai's movements were, it was a hundred feet away from him. Michi was caught off guard by its abrupt quickness and was clearly shaken. Reaching for another talisman from his robe, he slapped it on the yokai's forearm. This time, it began to glow with a dull grey colour as the yokai's arm turned to stone. It staggered back, appearing to be in a state of complete confusion as it grabbed the affected arm. It resolved to immediately break its arm over its knee. Once realising the talisman's effect on it, it managed to catch the stone curse at its furthest point, stopping the complete transformation. Strangely, the yokai appeared to show what he thought was a sense of relief. Afterwards, black tendrils exploded from the severed limb, spraying petrified flesh in a fan outwardly, and then twisting and contorting like loose ropes around each other until it took shape and completely replicated into another new limb, its arm fully restored. Michi twisted his face in horror as he watched the new limb being made before him like some cursed magic and it made his opponent seem like it was just short of having the power of a god. He had been countering and reacting to everything that he threw at it, and then some. There was one final do or die technique that he could use, banking on the former outcome rather than the latter. And it was wise, because Michi had no idea what he was up against. In fact, he was fighting a creature with legendary resilience. A creature entirely unique. During this contemplation, the yokai maneuvered around him using footholds in the ground to enhance its speed, placing itself behind Michi. With a resounding crack, a square fist made contact with the back of his head, knocking him out. Michi had met the tail teller for the very first time. A memory that will linger as both a lesson and a milestone in his life, and a story that he will tell others as a day he'd never forget. The tail teller was surprised at Michi's innate strength, and knowing that language would be an issue, and if not one resolved, would lead him right back to this moment. He used a potion that was the colour of sand, plucked some of Michi's white hair, and shook it in the bottle. There, now, we can finally talk. Then drank the mixture promptly, knowing that this would get rid of the problem for good, allowing him to add the host's vernacular to his own. Michi awoke next to a small fire and some rabbits roasting. Oh, what happened? He asked as his vision began to become clearer and the fog in his head began to lift. He looked around the camp and saw the man he was fighting sitting on a stump eating a cooked rabbit. Well, you were about to do something stupid, so I knocked you out caught some food, and waited for you to wake up. Michi looked astonished. How can I suddenly understand you? Does that mean you can understand me? What are you? Michi was both curious yet wary, but his inquisitive nature had gotten the better of him. Well, my name is the Tale Teller. I'm 328 years old, and I hunt monsters. Michi listened to every word he had to say before cautiously stating, Since apparently we are on the same side, I am needed in a village that is going through a dangerous drought. I am taking them some water to get them through the tough period, and we can search for a way to get you home as we travel. Michi stood up stretching as he made his way back to his cart. I forgot to introduce myself. I am Tyra Michi. He stated, friendlier than before. Michi and the tail teller hopped on the cart, and shared stories of their collective journeys to pass the time, 
till they arrived at the village. A half day of travel and the two arrived at the village, and using the water they brought with them, they began passing it out to the families of those households in need. As the sun began to set over the village, Michi made an acute observation. Every villager had black rings under their eyes. Michi looked over at the tale teller and asked in a slight whisper, Have you noticed the villagers all look like they haven't slept for days? Does it? I don't sleep at all anymore, so I wouldn't know. Michi pulled the village elder to the side. Why does everyone here look like they haven't slept for days? Asking bluntly. The village elder's eyes broke direct contact with Michi's. We can't ask any more of the temple. You all have done so much for us already. That's not the question he asked, the tale teller said, a bit aggravated. Michi held up a hand. If there is something else you need help with, we will do it free of charge. His voice was calm and respectful. Michi sat the elder down and listened as he spoke. It's been going on for five nights now. Ever since the spring dried up, there's been a battle that goes on in that area. That sounds of war, metal on metal. The whistling of arrows, the screams of men being slaughtered. The old man exhaled, <sighs> as if exhausted, just talking about it. It keeps us up, and by daybreak, the fighting subsides. Michi stroked his chin as he was lost in thought. Sounds like a Kosen Jobe. It is a large gathering of spirits that become demon fire. They normally don't hurt humans, but can disrupt them in the night with the sounds. Michi looked over to his traveling companion. Let's observe tonight, and if we can confirm it's a Kosen Jobe, then we will act the night after. I agree, but in the meantime, I need to show you how to fight. Your tactics are sound, he remarked. But you rely too heavily on your magic? I guess you could call it magic. Michi and the tale teller set out to the spring site. Upon arrival, they both see the outline of the spring, appearing to be a number of feet deep, and what appeared to be in the shape of a lake. Well, let's watch, Michi said, sitting down and drinking from a bamboo bottle. It took about an hour or two till he saw the first orb of fire pop up in the spring bed, and one by one more emerged from the ground as they took humanoid form, some missing arms, some missing legs, some with their eyes dangling out of their sockets. Yep, this seems to be a Kostanjorbi. With that, Michi and the tail teller began the trek to find a quiet place to train. Upon arriving at a clearing deep in the woods, the tail teller began their training. This concludes part one of Michi's journey, The Lost Chapter. A huge thank you to Carl Brandt and Jace York for providing this story to me, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next episode, where not only will I finish the story, but I'll also go over author notes, a particular favorite of mine by Carl Brandt, where we as the audience get some insight into the ideas and research behind all the yokai and Japanese folklore. I really enjoy those extras, and speaking of enjoyment, if you did like this episode, and if you get a chance, subscribe on the platform that you're on, whether it be SoundCloud, iTunes, any Apple Media stuff, Overcast, Stitcher, TuneIn, the list can go on, mates. <laughs> but if you do get a chance, a subscription tells other people that we exist. And by we, I mean the authors and I. <laughs> and if you have any friends or family that would like this channel, it's free and full of stories from around the world. Just tell them that, and hopefully they'll give it a shot. And I'll pull a seat up just for them. Thank you so much for listening. And it's that time already. This is the place where stories live, and you tell tellers come to listen. Enjoy your day or night, and join me every weekday for our creepy tradition. And as always, till next time. <laughs>